I now give the floor to Mr. Carlos Ruiz Mercio. Please. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Council, thank you for the opportunity to introduce the latest report of the Secretary General on Colombia and to update the Council on the most recent developments. It is a pleasure to be here along with Foreign Minister uh, Claudia Blum and of the Councillor for Stabilization and Consolidation, Mr. Emilio Archila. Mr. President, during the year that just ended, Colombia continued making significant strides on its peace process, even in the face of serious challenges, particularly in terms of security for conflict-affected communities, social leaders, and former combatants. Enhanced participation and improved security in the October regional elections demonstrated the positive effects and the positive impact of the peace process on Colombian democracy. The comprehensive system for truth, justice, reparation, and non-repetition continue its valuable work with the active participation of victims. Thousands of former combatants who only a few, a few years ago were armed with weapons of war continue to forge new lives through the opportunities provided by peace despite many difficulties and security risks. These and many other achievements of the peace process have been possible because of the efforts both the Colombian government and FARC, the support of the international community, including this council, but because also Colombians around the country, social leaders, public officials, volunteers, members of the security forces, the private sectors, and many others work every day to consolidate peace in their communities. Just this past Saturday, in southern Tolima, one of the regions where the conflict began a half century ago, former combatants, the armed forces, and members of the community started building a bridge together in the benefit of surrounding communities. I cannot think of a more encouraging example to begin the new year than the image of former adversaries working with a local community to build a bridge together. These hard-won gains must be protected, preserved, and built upon. And the best path, as the Secretary General has stressed again in his report, is through the comprehensive implementation of the peace agreement. I do encourage both parties to deepen their dialogue regarding any differences on the implementation of the final agreement, especially through the mechanisms designed by the agreement itself, such as the Commission for the Follow-up, Promotion, Verification on the Implementation of the Final Agreement, CCB. The social mobilizations that have taken place since last November have also opened an opportunity to constructive dialogue over peace implementation. <clears throat> Mr. President, on 27 December, in a welcome development, the reintegration road roadmap was adopted. This roadmap establishes the framework for the long-term reintegration process. Consultations between the government, particularly the Agency for Reintegration and Normalization with FARC, were key to finalization of this document. And the mission certainly is looking forward to supporting the parties in its implementation. Additionally, with the approval of 12 new collective productive projects, now close to 2,500 former combatants benefit from such projects. Beyond the project's approval and funding, it is important to ensure their long-term viability and sustainability, including through access to land, access to technical assistance, and access to markets. It is also important to increase participation of women and the involvement of local communities so that the projects help encourage development and reconciliation. It remains necessary to continue devoting a specific attention to the more than 9,000 former combatants living outside of the territorial areas. 
they face higher security risks and additional obstacles to access basic services and educational, employment, and productive opportunities. Former combatants with disabilities should also be given special attention. Also, sustained measures also are needed to provide protective environments for over 2,000 children of former combatants. I welcome the 128 additional accreditations for former combatants seen the Secretary General's September report as a positive first step in moving forward with this important matter. I also call upon all relevant actors to intensify efforts to resolve the situation of former FARC EP members whose accreditations remain pending. Without proper accreditation, they are left in legal uncertainty and cannot access reintegration benefits. <laughs> Mr. President, the pervasive violence in conflict-affected areas continue to threaten the consolidation of peace, as illustrated by se several profoundly worrying developments in the last few weeks. In his report, the Secretary General warned of the risk for more widespread violence in the Department of Chocó due to the activities of illicit armed groups. These past two weeks, communities in Bojaya, a municipality historically affected by conflict, denounced that the illegal armed groups, Group Autodefensas Gaitanistas de Colombia, had occupied territories and confined several communities while other communities in the area remain affected by the activities by the, of the National Liberation Army, ELN. Last week, I met with Afro-Colombian leader Leiner Palacios from Bojaya and heard firsthand, firsthand about the dire situation of these communities as well as communities across the Pacific coast. On 23 December, artist and social leader Lucy Villarreal was killed in the Nariño department after conducting, conducting an artistic workshop for children. And the killings of former FARC EP combatants resume on the very first day of the year with the death in Cauca department of Benjamin Banguera Rosales. The perpetrators of attacks against social leaders and former combatants must be brought swiftly to justice, including both material and intellectual authors and more effective measures are still imperative to protect these individuals and their communities. Mr. President, peace will not be fully achieved if the brave voices of social leaders continue to be silenced through violence, and if former combatants who lay down their weapons and are committed to their reintegration continue to be killed. The announcements yesterday by authorities that they had thwarted a planned attempt against the life of the FARC party president, Rodrigo Londoño, alias Timochenko, underscores the risk facing former FARC EP members and the peace process itself, and how crucially important it is to guarantee their security. Cauca, Chocó, Nariño, the epicenters of violence remain the same as the Secretary General has reported repeatedly, and the underlying conditions are consistent rural areas affected by a limited state presence and persistent poverty are where illegal armed groups and criminal structures continue victimizing populations, especially ethnic communities to control illicit economies. Each of these underlying causes of violence is addressed in different parts of the peace agreement. This is yet another reason to advance urgently with its full implementation. For instance, the development programs with a territorial focus, one of the tools envisioned in Section 1 of the Peace Agreement on Comprehensive Rural Reform, are helping bring much needed investment for conflict affected populations. Regarding illicit economies, the Peace Agreement created a crop substitution program to support families in transition and away from coca cultivation to other productive endeavors. Continuous support for this program and security measures for its participants is essential. Additionally, the peace agreement provided for the development of a public policy to dismantle illegal armed groups, criminal structures, and their support networks. This through the National Commission on Security Guarantees. This commission met just this past Wednesday. 
it is urgent for this policy to be established and implemented, and that the government can intensify its efforts to address security situation in former conflict areas. Senor Presidente. President. Since the 1st of January, Colombia has had new local and departmental authorities, including male and female mayors, male and female governors, and members of municipal councils and departmental assemblies. These include eight former combatants from the FARC-EP who were elected for public posts. We are encouraged that a large number of the recently elected authorities from various parties have expressed their commitment to peace and their support for the implementation of the agreement. The role of local authorities has been and remains fundamental for all efforts at building peace. Mr. President, to conclude, as Council members are aware, the peace agreement contains far-sighted provisions to address a multitude of challenges that have affected Colombia for decades. For these reasons, we remain convinced that the full implementation of the peace agreement in all its interconnected aspects provide the best possible hope for Colombia to lay the foundations for a more peaceful and prosperous future. The verification mission and the United Nations system in Colombia will continue to support the parties to move forward. The support of the international community and of this Security Council in particular will remain key. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Ruiz Macio for his briefing.